I write Python scripts to extract text and images from PDFs. Sometimes when you extract PDF images, they come out and look like the color scheme has been inverted. I have no idea how to anticipate which PDFs will do this, which images are going to be inverted. Sometimes it's every single image, sometimes it's only a handful of images. It makes no sense to me, and the only logical explanation is that it's some kind of gypsy curse. I initially tried to put a band-aid on the situation by coding an invert button, which I put into the Anki note template, but that sucks and I hate it. The image doesn't stay inverted, I have to do it every time that I review the flashcard, so after the thousandth time of clicking that invert button, I was losing the will to carry on. So instead, I wrote a couple of scripts to flip the colors and correct the color inversion issue once and for all. And of course, by I wrote some scripts, I actually mean ChatGPT wrote some scripts. My current workflow uses two separate scripts, one for WebP images and another one for PNG images. I have to drag the images into a specific folder, then run the scripts from the console, and then I have to open another folder, drag those images back into the collection.media folder, and it's all kind of a convoluted process. Basically, it sucks and I hate it. So I decided to automate the process of correcting the color inversion by taking those scripts and turning them into a desktop app, which I can then just open up and drag the images into, correct the inversion, and then drag them back into my collection.media folder. Super easy. And of course, I'm going to use ChatGPT to do this because I still haven't learned Python. <laughs> but I do have some experience making apps with ChatGPT. And let me tell you, it is a nightmare, but I have learned some guiding principles that I know will make the process go a lot smoother this time, I hope. As far as the actual process of building the app, I like to start out by just having a conversation with the chatbot. I like to tell it about you know, what I want to build, and then I tell it not to code anything at this point. I just want to learn more about the process. I want to identify any potential challenges that I might have during the build. And then I also want to identify the path of least resistance. What is the path that's most likely going to lead to a working product? Once I have a good idea about what I want to build, I'll either continue in that same conversation or I'll open up a new window and start a new conversation with one of the models that's more coding specific. I'll make sure that I give it all of the background information it needs to know. If I have to give it multiple prompts, I make sure it doesn't start coding until I've given it all of the background information that I need it to understand. Once it's up to speed, then I have it write the first version of the script. The first version rarely works immediately and it's usually, it's usually my fault. I've either not downloaded the correct libraries or my folder structure is all screwed up. Um, check the description for a written guide of how to set up a project with ChatGPT. Uh, hopefully by the time this video is out, it'll be there. Eventually it will be in the description. <laughs> but even though the first script rarely works, after a little bit of back and forth with the chatbot, I can usually get to a working script fairly quickly. And once I have a script that does all of the basic functions that I need it to do, you know, the simple version, I'm trying to keep it simple at first, I'll take a step back and I'll think about if there are any other functions that I want it to do that would be nice to have that I can start implementing and kind of iterating from here. And each time I make a big change, I obviously save that script and start a new version so that I can go back to that checkpoint if something goes wrong. So inevitably, as you're adding in these new features, and new functions, you're gonna get to one that just it just won't work. You hit a snag, you're kind of seeing that death spiral start. Um, at this point, you have two options. Either you rage quit, or you take a step back, you reevaluate, you go and learn something, usually about Python or whatever library that you're using that you're getting stuck with, and then come back and fix the issue. And then from here, it's basically rinse and repeat that process um, until you're satisfied with the build. Here's a, uh, here's a quick summary of how this particular build went for me. I explained to ChatGPT what was up and that I had two scripts that I wanted to convert into a standalone app, preferably one I could share. It said, 
Sick, I can definitely help you with that. It told me which libraries I would need and helped me set up my virtual environment. I gave it some final instructions about the features I needed included in the app, like the ability to drag and drop my images and to make my folder path permanent. It wrote the script and surprisingly, it worked. It helped a lot that I already had the scripts that were actually doing the color inversion finalized. So those things were actually already working. So I only had to put the pieces together. Otherwise, I think it would have been you know, a little bit longer before I got to a working version, but it happened pretty quick for me. I did some practice runs of converting some images and found an issue switching between WebP and PNG images. So ChatGPT gave me a button to clear the old files and this fixed the issue. I also messed around with the look of the user interface a bit. Once satisfied, I asked ChatGPT to package up this bad boy into an executable file which I could share with my PDF pirating homies. Then it said, hmm, hold up. If we package this as is, we're gonna lose that drag and drop function because the library we use is a temperamental little drama queen. You'll have to scrap that functionality or we need to go out, download the library, set it up locally, and then incorporate it into the build. And I was like, sweet, I'll do that but I'm a dum-dum and I went out and I downloaded the wrong version of the library. I downloaded the Windows 32-bit instead of the 64-bit version, which apparently is critical, which derailed us for a good 45 minutes until ChatGPT was like, yo, what the crap version of this library are you using? And I was like, there's more than one version. So I went out, I downloaded the 64-bit version, ChatGPT fixed the code, and we were back in business. Then I broke rule number one and I started to get cute and tried to put on a little custom icon into the app, which was not working. And then I remembered this app will never see the light of day because I'm the only nerd who's ever gonna use this thing. Uh, and I said, screw that. And I bagged the icon and just went ahead with the process. ChatGPT gave me the code to package the whole thing up into an executable file and the app was done. Then I had to go toe to toe with my antivirus software because it kept trying to put my app into timeout whenever I tried to run it because I thought it was a virus. But I told McAfee to chill the F out and confirmed that the app worked. Success. So now I have a sweet little app that I can use to fix all of the inverted images I extract from PDFs. And it only cost me like five hours of my life. Worth it? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs>